everyone. Uh, hopefully you're having a good day. My name is Andy from the Finding Value Finance uh, website. Today, uh, I've got Uslink back, uh, Casper Rasmussen. And if you guys want to follow him on uh, Twitter, just to show you guys how to do that, we'll pull it up here real quick. Uh, this is at Uslink INV. Uh, he's an engineer uh, by trade, very similar to myself. And uh, I wanted to ask him, you know, get him back on, ask him a couple of questions of what he's seeing. He's got nice, big, long-term, clean charts. He's looking at the different time frames, And it's always good to get different opinions than just my opinion. So I wanted to bring him on, get his opinion on what's going on with the, with the markets. And, um, you know, welcome back on, Casper. Really appreciate you, you spending some time coming yeah, back. Thank you for having, having me back. Thank you. Yeah, so what, what are you seeing uh, in the markets? What, uh, what looks good? What looks bad? What, what are you seeing with the charts? Uh, I see some some slight optimism, even though you know the past half year has been uh, very bad for everyone, no matter what you were in, more or less, except the dollar and gold, I guess. But I see some some slight optimism here, so I think we could in, could be in for some month of of a big bear rally, you can say. But still, it's very early, so uh, yeah, nothing is uh, set in stone these days. But yeah, you you chose the word uh, bear rally. So we're definitely in a bear market. Is that what you think in the overall? So when, when you say a bear market, you say like the S&P 500, uh, stuff like that in the overall markets or? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, S&P 500, NASDAQ and, uh, and the Russell are clearly in, a, in, a, in, a, in my point of view in a bear market right now, for sure. So let me, let, I'm just gonna kind of, maybe I'll steer this a certain direction, but um, yeah, sure. we've got the nice big pullback on the S&P and the NASDAQ that first kind of leg lower, do you think we're going to get a bear trap, a bear trap here? Or uh, sorry, a bull trap. A bull trap, yeah. Well, it, I, I think we're going to get a rally. And depending on how, you know, the formation will be, uh, we can start to look at it as, as, a, as a, a bull trap or maybe there is some more legs to it. But definitely we are in for, I think, a small rally that could, if we are lucky, get into a, a longer rally. But And one thing I've noticed, and I, obviously I read charts as well, um, I've noticed that with this pullback in the NASDAQ, the pullback in S&P 500, uh, we've got a lot of our commodities that seem, you know, seemingly are kind of linked up with it, especially, yep. uh, especially, especially uh, uranium. Yes, for sure. Do you think that uranium is going to get pulled back with the overall markets? I think... It depends on how fast it goes, because if if it if it drops really fast, you know everything gets sold. Doesn't matter what it is. But if you get this uh, chop down, let's say, you know, in the overall markets, then I think uranium will hold up better, uh, just because of the of of this of uh, the supply and demand, you know, in in the uranium space. I think you accidentally turned your camera off. I did. <laughs> yeah. That that wasn't. Uh, for some reason okay oh you got Sorry. it back you're good there it is yeah good, good. um so you think that you think this link is going to break at some point or you think it's going to stay connected i think it's gonna gonna break you know in the favor of uranium for sure um okay. because you know we we are in an energy crisis even though oil has has pulled back like i don't know 30 bucks or so 40 bucks ish 30 maybe uh, we're still in, you know, uh, uh, an energy crisis, especially here in Europe. I mean, we just talked about before we went on that uh, prices in, in Europe for electricity is just insanely high. Uh, I live in Denmark, so they are still somewhat cheap. Not, it's not cheap, but we're doing better than compared to, to Germany and Spain and Italy uh, because they are getting hit very hard. Um, but at some point, we're going to feel that pain as well, for sure. We are. So I know um, you've been looking at a couple of couple of assets using ratios, and what 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 I should say what assets what ratios are you looking at? And you said that they're about to turn. What exactly are you seeing, and and what what assets are you interested in right now? If we stick to the energy sector, uh, I always look at the the URA, the uranium sector, compared to XLE, the energy sector. And I think I also posted that on uh, on Twitter as well some weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I can share my screen if. Uh, yep. And there it is. Yes, you can see it. I guess, yeah. Yes, looks good. Yes. So, so this is the uranium divided by the XLE. 
So as you can see uh, here clearly since, you know, the peak in late uh, 2021, you know, the Iranian market has uh, underperformed heavily in this uh, against the overall energy sector. But what I see right now here is that, you know, there could be a small shift, you know, in sentiment um, in that ratio. And uh, here I'm looking at uh, three things. I had a, a long-term gap down here that we closed. Gaps is something that I'm trying to look more at because for some reason they, they always get filled. But they are very, uh, they're very tricky, I say, because I, have, I haven't understand why they're getting filled, but that's a different discussion, I guess. But uh, we closed this uh, big gap down here. And then the big you know, reason for me saying that you know, uranium is about to, to outperform the overall um, energy sector is basically you know, this, this wedge that we have here leading down to the gap. And also we have the one to five wave correction. Um, so we should see some outperformance here in the short term for uranium. Uh, but still the 200 DMA is, is sloping down. So, I mean, we're not out of the woods yet, but uh, this is definitely a good beginning for uranium. I, th I think for a one, for that, for there to be a one to five wave going downward, we're going to get an ABC correction upward and then we're going to go down again. Is that correct? Yeah, that's what you typically see. Yeah, it is. But and I know it's a ratio. But yeah, it's a ratio. But, but uh, these uh, formations or, you know, ABC still happens in ratio as well. Um, they sure do. Uh, okay. So we have to wait and see, you know, the big hurdle is still, you know, these bottoms that, that we have down here, you know, I was a bit sad when they broke, but uh, we have them right here, right? So we will, oh, sorry, up here, my bad. And then we, we I think we're going to test that one again, you know, a big, a very big back test here, and then probably see a pullback, and then we will see what happens. But uh, yeah, and you when you position, you don't trade in and out of these positions, do you? You you just add to your no, positions, no. or yes, I have a I have a I have my overall long term position for uranium, which I bought back here in uh, in late twenty twenty. Where are we? We are here somewhere. I bought it right here at November, and uh, and that position I haven't sold out of, but I have some you know I have some cash you know ready to deploy on the pullbacks. And often I use the ratios to, to, to time my entry the best way possible. Um, okay. so, so yeah, that's what I do a lot. And, and you said, I think last time you were talking about you, you spent, or you um, accumulated a lot of the developing country or developers, I should say, of, of the companies. Yes, you know, the, the ones that are very known, like Denison uh, Energy Fuels uh, and all those, uh, yeah, the fame, the more known ones I, I do okay. buy up in these days. So, And you do you own anything else in your portfolio? Just curious, besides uranium? Yes, I have, uh, I think, as I, mentioned, as I mentioned last time, a gold, silver, platinum, palladium. Um, what else do I have? Uh Mining companies. Yeah, I can't even remember now. Yeah, mining companies overall. Yeah, but mostly I think I have fifty percent of my overall uh, investment right now is in uranium. Maybe 40, 40 50 percent, I would say. Yeah, I, I was uh, talking with a lot of other um, people who are investing in uranium. They are uh, very highly exposed to uranium, mm -hmm. and uh, my position in uranium is much lower than I guess a lot of people. Um, in their position sizes, they they really have the conviction of uranium. Uh, what's yeah, what's kind of scares me away from uranium a little bit is the uh, the non cash flows. So it makes yeah, up a exactly. smaller percentage of my portfolio than maybe like oil, energy services, and stuff like that. Okay, yeah. so yeah, oil was uh, actually oil was a uh, commodity that that got away from me. So hmm. I was I didn't get on that train, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, it's a uh, you can't hit them all, I guess. But uh, yeah. So uh, just to, for everyone to know, URA is the uh, ETF for uranium and XLE is the ETF for uh, oil and natural gas. Yes, correct. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Just so people under, you know, they know what it is. Uh, what else are you looking at? You said you were looking at, I think, gold possibly um, making a potential turn at some point. Uh, what ratios are you using there? What, what chart? doesn't have to be a ratio, but whatever it is. I, I, I mean, in, in gold, I just look at this, the... the what we know this uh yeah the standard chart for gold mm -hmm. and 
and and I think you know we are about to again to complete you know a one two three four five wave. We just need to search for the bottom at some point, and I think we will hit this uh, COVID. What what do you want to call it? Call it so COVID zone, COVID level here at uh, sixteen eighty or something like that. I think we will hit that again, and uh, and nothing is set in stone, but I think that should be the one that gets us going again back up here. Uh, because if we lose this one, then it looks very. It doesn't look. The, it does not look the best for gold. That's for sure. But. Um, Okay, and how how long do you think this correction is going to last? Do you think we're close to a turning point, or do you think we're going to have a small upward movement and then a larger correction, and then we take off? No, I think we will have. Uh, uh, if if just going to just do some free uh, yeah free riding here, whatever okay. you want to call it. Yeah, exactly. I think we'll get the standard. You know, the hopefully the the breakaway, and then some sort of that was not the best, but you know, a breakaway. And then the back test, and then we see what happens. Um, um, yeah, to, to, just to give an example. But this is something that we could see, and hopefully that is also what is going to play out. Um, but then you know, breakaway, and then back test, and then we kind of have to wait and see what what's going on. But uh, but as for any chart, you know, we have to make we have to make a higher higher before we can start to to see uh, or to to uh, have more confidence in the in the in the turnaround the higher high is always important okay and right now we have only seen you know lower low lower high and so on so we are definitely in a, in a short term downtrend for the past half uh, since march basically yep so we're getting down to a very crucial point for gold um now if we break that that support level that you've got drawn in there at 1670. Uh, I think the next level of support is down by like 14 something is if I can remember right. There's, yeah, there's a really that, yeah yeah there is the, yeah the big one is down here at the uh, yep. below 14 and then we of course yeah, we have 13. this wick you know the COVID wick yeah the COVID wick we have down here. Um, yeah, I don't think we will get that low, but then again, you know I. I would have thought by now that gold has uh, would be above two thousand. So <laughs> it's uh, very mm -hmm. tricky to 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 predict. But uh, that's why you have to you have to follow the charts, you know. And uh, and uh, one thing that I have learned, you know, f especially from silver, is that no matter how how bullish you are on the sector or on this specific company, what matters or what is the truth is, is always, you know, the, the 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 price action on the chart, you know, because that is what people are. They are putting their money into the sector and and whatnot. So the chart is always the truth, no matter how uh, how convinced you are um, for that sector. Um, so that's one lesson learned. Have you tried to um, understand necessarily the market conditions? I call it market conditions that are driving the chart patterns. Have you ever looked into any of that stuff? Uh, what do you mean specifically? Uh, well. So um, gold goes up during certain market conditions, right? Uh, you could say um, in the beginning of inflation, when, when they have yeah. quantitative yeah. easing, it seems to always uh, go up quite dramatically uh, for, for some period of time. Have you, have you ever looked at what the correlations are of the, the, the drivers that are driving the charts? Or have you just kind of followed the charts and not really looked at the drivers of what's maybe driving the charts. I mean, I, I look, mm -hmm. I look mostly, uh, mostly at the charts, but also, especially for gold and silver, I like to look at you know, gold adjusted for inflation. That's also a very good way to look at at, at gold. Um, but but that, these two are the the main ones that I use for especially for gold. Yeah. Yeah, because what I uh, yeah what I did just. Just to, just to share is like I, I back I looked at the charts and then I said well what's driving these charts and I tried to look at leading indicators of what could potentially sway the sentiment or sway uh, people to buy gold so I was looking at the chart and then back testing what could potentially be driving it and then look at those drivers and then use those as an indicator of what a chart could potentially do and then follow to see if the chart would do it, you know, like energy or, or, or gold. I, I basically explained it. And that's how I got the whole 
thesis of the channel was was basically doing it that way. But I was just okay. curious if you okay. tried looking at looking at it from that perspective at all, uh, or anything like that. That's all. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, but I'm trying, you know, similar things like looking at, at, at if, if I can see if I can if I can find a fractal for gold, uh, back from you know the the 70s. I mean, I love to look I love to look at fractals. Uh, you know, going back to see if, if what we're seeing right now is something that has happened in the past in similar conditions like we are now, like in the 70s, you had high inflation and so on. So I do that very often uh, and also post a lot of uh, fractal charts on my uh, on my Twitter account. So. Do you have any examples of any, like a fractal that you're following or trying to trying to find or see? No, I, have actually, I have actually deleted a lot of them for some reason. I don't know why, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so and of course I, I asked right you know right now like hey, so let's don't, take a look i don't know if i have any you know from uh <clears throat> no they are all gone i can see so uh no because i had some for silver but uh but yeah, yeah. no i don't have any uh, because they the drawings are gone so okay that's no big deal so what, uh, what else are you seeing in the markets? You said maybe that we could be getting a bounce in the NASDAQ, uh, perhaps? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's still, uh, and the reason why I say we are on a bear market is clearly, you know, this is the 200 DMA, uh, the moving average. And we, and as you, if you go back, you know, this moving, moving average has never turned down this much in like, I don't know, since 2008 or seven. So we are clearly, you know, in a, in a in a big correction or in a in a bear market, and one one reason, you know, for me saying that we could be in for some, hopefully some uh, uh, a small rally here is this uh, small somewhat break of this wedge here. Mm -hmm. but, but but still we have, you know, it's still not out of the woods yet because we still have to to clear this high up here, right? We still have to to somehow get get back above here. Otherwise, it's just a, a bear pennant or a, cont uh, a continuation pattern down here. Uh, so we have to wait and see. I think next week will give us some clues uh, regarding what um, what will happen. Um, and then you said that we could see a uh, decoupling between uranium and the overall markets, especially I look at the NASDAQ and uranium because it seems like they're almost coupled up. Do you use the uranium to NASDAQ ratio at all? Yes, I do. You do? It's, it's right here actually. So. So this is just, uh, I have removed, uh, again, I've removed a lot of my drawings here just to clean up a bit. But still, as we can see here, since uh, actually since, you know, the Uranium bull market began back in the late 20, uh, 2020, it has been outperforming the NASDAQ overall with big pullbacks. Yes, I, I know. But, uh, but as long as we are inside, you know, we have somewhat of a channel here. Not that clean, but anyways, um, as long as we're inside this, uh, this channel here, the uranium is uh, is outperforming the Nasdaq, and also uh, the pullback that we have gotten right now is the more, more or less the same, you know, compared to the last uh, the last two that we got here. So a dip below the 200 moving average, and then pop back up, and then pop back up. So what we want to see right now for the uranium to start outperforming is again for this to hold. Uh, as you can see here, since uh, the past three weeks or so, we have been struggling here in this very important zone here. And uh, what we want to see is, you know, we want to get it back above again. Mm -hmm. It's from the orange formation here, we want to get back above in order to have a shot to go a lot higher. Um, but we are right on the edge here. So it's a very, the next week will be very uh, exciting to see which way we go. I'm in the, I'm in the bull camp. Just to let everybody know. Yeah, but, yeah, same here. Uh, yeah. I think people are aware of that. So I think uh, uranium is, uh, as I started to, to, to write about, you know, uh, in the tw uh, two years ago, I think uranium is, hopefully, I think it's one of the best investments you can have for this decade here. Um, that's just my view on it. So uh, I think the, fun the fundamentals, as we talked about last time, is insanely good. And mm -hmm. I read, you know, I think it was yesterday or two days ago that Japan was going to restart nine reactors. So it's get, it gets better and better for every day that goes by, so. We lost your camera again, if you wanna. Oh, really? Why is there some, some sort of auto, uh, I don't know. And then, so you said you bought, yeah, we got you back. 
Um, uh, you cool. bought in November. Uh, yes. What uh, what led you to buy at that particular time? That was actually somewhat uh, nothing is simple, but I just at that point I looked at the uranium chart and uh, and this was you know I started to look into to uranium after the COVID crash uh, and I think you know this move that we get here is you mm -hmm. know. Just like we get to the upside, you know, when we're in a bear market, we often get this blow off top of what you want to call it. So this was the end of the bear market uh, for uranium in my book. Um, I didn't buy here, but uh, but uh, I started to to basically go look for an entry. So I wanted to have I wanted to to buy on a bull pack on a bull a pullback, which I always do. Um, so yeah, you know, basically, you know, this was my uh, was what I was looking at back then. So mm -hmm. we had this huge, you know, breakdown, and I mean, then we have the, the false breakdown back above, and then I look for the pullback. So I started to buy here in this area, um, you know, right here on the on the pullback on the way down here. I started to add on this one here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, right here actually. Yeah, I, I bought it based off the ratio and the charts that's yeah and yeah. i bought you know uh september october november i just kind of flooded into it mm -hmm. and, and actually, a variety uh, of companies sorry in a variety of different companies yeah so also that's I, actually a pretty good uh yeah. you know this is a uh, if you look at the ratio only i mean this also you can clearly see you know when did uranium start to outperform the nasdaq and we have this uh, bullish formation, and upon the break, then we just from there we just went off. Mm -hmm. So it uh, it matches very well. So, so when you look at the when you look at the uh, like URA or all those just by itself, uh, I see a clear one you know a, a, a Elliott wave up of of a one, three, and five wave, and that I think we're getting an ABC correction yes. out of this. You, yeah. Do you agree with that, or, or? Yeah, I think uh, I think it's it it's not as clean as you normally see, but you could argue that you know we have the one, two, three, four, and then five. Yep. And now we have the the yeah the A B, and then hopefully the, the C will be this one here. I'm hoping. Uh, yeah. But one, if if you do the measured move from from the top to the to the A point, and then we have B here, so, so the the one hundred percent measured move is actually all the way down here at fifteen. Point six. So that would also be within reason looking at a pullback. Of course, uh, it's still like, uh, I don't know how, how many percent is that, 15 or so? Yeah, 16% still to go. If that if we were to go that far, we have still have 15% to the downside. So. Well, might as well scare everyone out, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because I know a lot of people would, would hate to lose this pivot low here, you know, this one. Yeah, but and but, actually, one yeah. funny note is that uh, sorry, Andy, uh, this low here is the exact point where Sprott, you know, came to the market, August 20, uh, 2021. So if we get down here, I would assume that there would be a lot of buyers here, due to this the history behind this pivot low here. So yeah, yeah, I, I added I added down there. I added on this pullback coming back. I just sprinkle in, get, yeah. get my shares. Um, are you looking at any other uh, sectors at the moment, or is uranium your favorite sector at this time, or is there something else? Yeah, uranium is my favorite sector, but I'm still looking at something else. Um, actually, I think I mentioned last time on our video that uh, you and Scott had had a talk with uh, with uh, about uh, what's it called um, shipping, Sh shipping, which it which I didn't know anything about at that point, and uh, and then you talked a lot about this CTRM, you know. Uh, stock yep. and, um, and 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 one thing that I, I uh, I'm just going to the log scale because it was more easy to see and uh, and what could play out right now is actually exactly what happened back in yeah 2020 to to late yeah, to 2021 this formation here is more or less the same here even though it's smaller but you know the movement and so on is identical more or less. Uh, and also, as you like to, to talk about a lot, is you know this uh, booty bottom here. So it's uh, it could be very interesting to see if this plays out. 
um, and I have here, you know, placed this uh, left shoulder to be formed here. And if we break here, I think we have a you have a great buying opportunity for sure for for shipping. And if we were to go all the way back up to this pivot high here, I mean, that's uh, I know it sounds ridiculous, right? But that's uh, above ten x, you know, fifteen x or so. It's uh, yeah, it's a very good risk reward. I mean, if you want to to look at the risk reward, if we were to go that high, I can try to measure it. It's um, it's pretty amazing. If you go to, if you go to the top right, and then we have where the hell did that one go? That's oh, it's log scale. Sorry for the mess. I think uh, I fuck this one up one second here. Sorry. I got the log scale. Yeah. So we have the top here, and then we have right below here would be your your stop loss, right? You have it right here. At some point, uh, depending on where we break, but let, let's just leave it at here. And then, um, yeah, you would have like uh, it, it makes it's ridiculous, right? But you have <laughs> the ratio right now is uh, 100 to one, so it doesn't get much better than that. Even though if you only go to like halfway, you still have amazing risk here. So if you place like a thousand dollars, right, and you are ready to lose it, lose it all, you can uh, make very good. Uh, you, you, you can have a very good trade here for sure. But then again, we have to wait and see what, what the charts are showing us over the next month or two regarding shipping. Yeah, I've seen that same fractal uh, playing out in a bunch of different uh, companies. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if, well, yeah, there's a, there's a company right now that's trying, trying to break out. It's got the same fractal as that. Okay. So I've seen this thing many times so yeah and i think actually this bike or this move that we have here wasn't that the chinese opening you know back then they reopened here again at some point i guess if i remember if i um, remember correctly i can't remember if that was uh, the exact time but but yeah yeah it looks ridiculous that's all i know yeah. it's a, yeah, it's it a gigantic it fractal it's a fract yeah, yeah, huge yeah. fractal yeah, that's CHRM. That's that. That's one of the companies I own that I'm just sitting in. I'm waiting. Yeah. And also, what I like to do this is the CTRM. And if you look at CTRM, uh, you know, divided by the the uh, Baltic dry index, the Baltic dry index, you get the ratio between the two. Mm -hmm. and I know it's a bit early, you know, but but still, you know, we we have uh, started to see some breakage, you know, from from this high down to here. But still, as always, we would like to see, you know, getting above this here, and then we have a high high. And at that point, I think, you know, the uh, the risk gets reduced a lot if we can get above this pivot high here. Um, it's time to go ballistic. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah true. You know, I, yeah, I like shipping's good. I, I don't have it's not a huge portion of my portfolio, but I have, you know, I have some of it. And again, if you, if you have like, let's say 1% in your portfolio, if, if it does like, let's say 10X or 20X, that's amazing. No matter if you have $1,000 or $10,000, it doesn't matter. You know, a trade, 20X is insane, no matter the amount you have put into it. So that's... Uh... Agreed, agreed. Yeah. So is there anything else that, that you're looking at? Chart-wise? Um, yeah, yeah, this was uh, actually something I have uh, I looked at yesterday. And uh, for some reason, I only first yesterday saw this, you know, this uh, parallel trend line that we have mm -hmm. uh, going back all the way down to, yeah, like 10 years ago. And right now we are testing this at 18.2 or something like that. So right now for silver is actually a very, very important point, you know, in time. Um, um, and we want to see this go higher. Otherwise, I think there could be more pain ahead, even though in my, in my mind, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, it's. Uh, I think uh, silver should be way higher than it is right now, but again, you know, the charts is uh, telling us what what is right, but um, but we need this one to hold here for sure. Just curious, um, it almost looks like the twenty eighteen to twenty twenty low is this almost the same fractal on a smaller time frame as the larger yeah. one that we have. 
Yeah, you mean yeah. this one here, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. from 2018, awesome. that 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 low there, you could like almost project it up again. Like it's it's just repeating yeah. over and over and over. Yeah, that's so funny, right? Because you have these fractals yeah. going everywhere on the charging one with the one hourly, the daily, and so on. It's yep. it, it's quite amazing. But we can try to, to somehow see if it's if it's somewhat is the same. And uh, I mean, it's okay, I guess. It, it's a decent fractal. You know, the the timing is a bit off, but uh, yeah. But 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 you know, nothing is is text uh, is textbook. But yeah, I agree. You know, we have a, a similar fracture. Yeah, it's very close. So we need to see how 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 low it can go or will go. But uh, how low can it go? <laughs> how low can it go? <laughs> yeah, and uh, one thing I, I do want to note though is I'm not seeing much relief on the physical metal side. You know, when I go to buy this stuff, you know, the premiums seem like they're just going up and they're holding quite yeah. steady the actual physical price of silver. Silver's not really physic you know the physical price of it isn't really falling down very much no no same here uh, and so I, mean, I, ha I have a you know a buyer in that i i buy my gold and silver and uh, silver in belgium here in in the uh, in europe and i uh, you know like weekly i go in there and check what what is the price and then i see how what the premiums are and they are more or less the same you know around 25 30 percent or so but but in the past week they have been ticking up you know a, a percent or two so, so it's getting a lot more expensive to buy the physical, but the paper price is just going down the drain, I guess. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, and this is the, uh, do you think there's like some sort of war going on right now? Do you think they're trying to push these prices lower or cap them because of war? And these are signals to the market stating that there's a currency problem, an inflation problem. Do you, do you think, I, I mean, no one really knows, but. Do you, do you think there's something like that going on where they're like pushing the price of the physical down, paper paper pricing down, but the physical is remaining pretty robust? You think something something like that might be happening? I know it's speculative, but yeah, but I but totally, I think that that right now there are some some people, let's say, that wants to discourage people from buying gold and silver for whatever reason. We don't know, but but they want to make sure that that people don't buy, uh, or the common men and women don't buy gold and silver right now for some reason. Um, because when they look at this chart right now, they are looking at uh, something that is, uh, I don't want to buy the silver, right? It's down almost like 50%, you know, in like two years. Um, so yes, for sure. I think there's some, there could be some bigger things behind the curtains going on right now. Especially mm -hmm. if you look at, you know, China, Russia, and India, they buy all the gold they can possibly do, right? They buy everything. Uh, and I mean, if they don't do that for some stupid reason, right? They they do it because they know more than we do, and uh, and uh, and yeah, right now they're getting gold and silver very cheap, very very cheap in my opinion. Um, but then again, we yeah, it's speculation, I know, but but yes, that's also my my theory behind these uh, these moves here. Yeah, and the reason I say that is they are releasing from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve oil they're releasing all these things in the market to try to control, manipulate prices. And it's like, well, mm -hmm. why would they stop there? Uh, and we're seeing this dollar strengthen uh, the DXY quite dramatically, uh, almost as if that could be a response to a greater you know, problem in the market. Like, like they're almost defending the dollar to some extent against other currencies. Yeah. So yeah, Perhaps they're hitting this to the downside, which creates an opportunity for anyone who is a, a contrarian and wants to buy at a cheap price. You cost average in when it's when it's really low. I mean, we're we're probably I don't know what the cost curves on silver are because a lot of it is a byproduct. But I would expect uh, in times of a recession that copper production and some of these maybe industrial metals may remain flat or go down, which would then decrease the supply of of silver uh, along with them yeah yeah so. i know i think i know i think copper is uh, you know when they are mined for copper they get a lot of silver as a byproduct mm -hmm. so if they start to to stop mining for copper then you get a drastic drop in in, in silver supply as well for sure yeah there's and, the and, dollar and you, currency there yeah you mentioned the dollar right i mean who wants to to own gold and silver when you can own the dollar right which has gained it's insane actually but uh but that's like on 20%, a 20%, right? That's on a relative basis 
against the basket yes, of other exactly. currencies. So it's it's yeah, uh, true. We're going up on the airplane as the airplane's diving down. Yeah, true, we're, true. Or yeah. well, the parachute guy, you know, falls uh, slower than the other one. So, but yeah. Yep. Yep. And this is also what has been crushing the markets big time. You know, everything has been because this this move, you know, in like what is it, like a year or so, twenty percent. That's a major move in in any currency, and especially the dollar. You know, so. Um, and I also think that if you look at this overall, this is um, a major perspective, life like fifty years or so. That we could be, you know, the way five is somewhere around here, depending on how, where we go. Um, and then I think we get a correction, and then we see what we do. But I think, you know, these moves that you see here, they are not sustainable, no matter what asset or company you have. These will, at some point, break down. Um, mm -hmm. And I think we're seeing that, you know, within the next. I think I made a tweet like uh, a week or two ago that. Uh, that the, do the dollar would peak here in July, early August. Um, I'm, I'm not saying, you know, the, the final peak, but then we get a correction and then we maybe go higher from that, but we get a correction for sure. We have to, because, you know, if, if the dollar keeps going up, you know, everything, you know, in the NASDAQ and, and uh, SP 500 keeps going down. And as uh, I don't know, uh, I think in the US, your uh, pensions, you know, IRA and so on, they are, are weighted a lot towards these companies. So people are not very happy to see their IRA accounts, you know, go down like 50% in uh, in a year or so. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we have midterm elections, I think, is it like four weeks, uh, four months or so? Is yep. it four months? Uh, yeah, yeah. Four months or so. Yep. Yeah. So that's also why I think we have this rally here leading into these uh, elections. So it doesn't look that bad. And then uh, when everyone is reelected and so on, they can just keep, do what they do for two years. So, so yes. Yeah, and what do you ever look at the uh, uh, at yields? See what yields are doing. Do you have any charts on uh, uh, U.S. ten-year yield or anything? Yeah, I have it uh, somewhere. Right I think now. you had it right, right where it is. Oh, there it is. Yeah, right, yeah. I don't know how much I have left, but still, I think these are. It's very simple, but these are what most people have, you know, put on. That's what um, I yeah. So this is the. This is the yeah the ten-year yield, and I also think that. It has peaked for now, mm -hmm. uh, and also uh, the reason why is you know we have this head and shoulders down here. Again, all of my drawings are gone, so I don't know. I'm sorry for that, but we have this head and shoulders down here, and I think the measured move has been met with a bit of overperformance to to the upside, uh, roughly, roughly around here. Let's just keep it on back like that. Um, just going to clean up. So we have met the target for this. Uh, Head and shoulders or inverse head and shoulders. Mm -hmm. So I'm uh, I'm I'm positive that we are going to see uh, some sort of correction here. Do you think um, that that's making a larger inverse head and shoulders pattern, where you just basically did the head, the left shoulders on the left there, and it's making yeah. it's going to make a right shoulder perhaps? Yeah, good point. A good point. Yeah. yeah. It could be. Could very well, uh, very well be. And also what we, uh, if you, you know, the inflation, I can find the inflation chart somewhere, uh, just just as a as a side note, uh, where is it? Um, there it is. If you go back to the 70s again, you know, these are the, the three spikes that we saw during the 70s regarding inflation. And even though they were big, you know, we had some major pullbacks, you know, in, uh, in inflation. Um, it's on the right-hand side for the 70s. Oh, sorry. It's the right over to the right on the for the seventies. Uh, so yeah, yeah. sorry. Over yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> I was a bit confused here. So thank you. But we had some major pullbacks, right? In in, in inflation, sixty percent here, even bigger here, sixty percent again, right? Um, so what we see now, I think, uh, what we see now is you know, number one or two, you know, the pullback, uh, we will see here right now. So we will have a big drop here again. Also, we're going into recession, or we are in a recession right now. So we ought to see somewhat of a big-ish pullback down, down to some sort of a level. Um, right here. So yes, I know it's uh, people think, you know, that uh, I wouldn't say I'm crazy, but you know, 
I expect fully that we have to see a pullback in, in inflation, maybe down to like four or five percent, because we're going into a recession. And uh, but when we get back to four percent, which is very high, you know, still four percent inflation is very high. But that is only going to be the launch pad for the next move up. And then at, at that point, it's going to be very ugly for the average you and I. So. Mm -hmm. So you think we're going to get a pullback in inflation? You don't think we're, we've uh, what? What's that level right where it's at? What? How high is that? Because that, that may not have the new data. The oh, new it data, doesn't. It doesn't. The new, the nine, new data is like nine point one. Yeah, so it's a bit above the the trend line here. We gonna are we gonna break higher? You think it's gonna come back? You said it was gonna come back. I think it's gonna come back because we're going into a big recession. But when a year or two, when that has uh, you know unwinded to some degree, it's gonna turn right back up again. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and that is you know the last the last pullback before everything gets really ugly. But then again, we yeah, have to wait and see sense. what the charts makes. We have to wait and see what it what it says, right? Because if we get a clean cut, you know, from here we go to like let's say whatever eleven uh, percent, then you know the pullback will be the top of this year, and then it's a lot more nasty that that would be a lot more nasty compared to you know pulling all the all the way back here so mm -hmm. that's what i think we'll do i think we still have a i think we still have higher inflation rates of inflation because i think they calculate that that's year over year right the cpi yes. i think is calculated yeah. year over year yeah. last year i don't think we had prices at the end of 2021 as high as we have them today so i still think we have inflation i think it'll slow down from the stuff recently mm. and i think we'll get above it we'll come back and then it's going to go take off absolutely again berserk. yeah yeah exactly and that could very well happen i mean this will be this scenario right where we get this to like 12 11 pull back and then blast off yep. and yeah, then I that's agree. where everything just uh, cracks down more or less yeah i, th I think uh, once we get through the recessionary fears um that'll be our pullback there the recessionary fears yeah. and people worrying yeah. or if we have a recession whatever We'll pull back and then it's going to be like game on after that i think i think i think some something's going to happen with energy and it's going to be like yeah, yeah. boom <laughs> yeah i totally i totally agree and it could I be mean, we have, yeah. i mean we have the uh, already seen you know the the population in i can't remember the countries that are starting to you know break embassies and uh present and palaces and so on i can't remember the countries but that will happen you know in europe as well if this was it in Indonesia it or something or Sri Lanka? I can't or, remember the or, uh, Yeah, Sri Lanka. Right. Yeah, that's true. Sri Lanka and, uh, and and some other countries as well. So, so okay. yeah, we will see that once pe once people get hungry, you know, they start to to fight for their lives. So, yeah, <laughs> it's a it's I, a pretty basic. Uh, <laughs> no, exactly. It's a pretty basic uh, need, right? So maybe it's Haiti too or something. I can't remember. Yeah, that could be, could be, yeah. So, uh, do you have anything else to share? You have anything else you want to share or, or uh, add in here? Because mm. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you actually, yeah, I, I marked these two here. Sorry, uh, yes, I have some actually. Okay, I think this is again uranium against uh, crude oil. oil. Yep, crude oil, yeah. And this one I have had for a long time, this, uh, I call it demand zone, I guess you can say. And we actually bounced perfectly for now at least. So uranium is again, you know, pulling or, or making a, a bounce here against oil. Um, and we see the same thing in, uh, in gas as well. So this is the, the demand zone. And then we have the, uh, the breakout. And then we are just back testing many times, which at some point we're going to, to skyrocket here. And I think Nasdaq, uh, sorry, not Nasdaq. I think net gas is something that is going a lot higher. But if this this ratio plays out, then uranium gonna do way more compared to gas. And that's why I like you know uranium so much. It's uh, it just looks so good from a fundamental point of view and the technicals. It's just uh, it does yeah. something you see every every day. So yeah, I think uh, American natural gas will go higher for sure, and then I think uranium is mm -hmm. gonna do some. It's going to go full ballistic at some point. I just don't know that that yeah. point, and I'm I'm not willing to sell out of it. I don't care if I lose 10, 20, 30 percent on the position. 
I'm not going to lose the position because when it goes, it, it, goes. it could do some crazy things. Uh, Just like in 2000, you know, the, some of those 2000 seven, things. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, seven. It went up massively in one, like one month. It's like, oh my goodness. So yeah, I think uh, energy months. fuels in like nine months increased by 7,000, 7,500% in like nine months or something. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to miss so, that. Cause no, it, you can't, it's, it's impossible to catch, right? It's impossible. So yeah. And another thing I want to say about that too, is uh, the volatility is so big that if you're down, you know, I know somebody would think you're down 50%. Now the stock has to go up hundred percent. And it's like a hundred percent in these stocks is absolutely nothing. Exactly. So, you can see, you can see here today, right. You know, it's just a small news from Can Alaska, you know, it's up uh, 26%. So it can go very yeah, fast. So, it, it, it can go and do ludicrous things in very short periods of time. Yeah. And to actually buy one of these stocks and be within 50% of the bottom is pretty hard, actually. <laughs> it's not, it's yeah. not easy if you're entering at a stage like right now. So you kind of just have to cost average in slowly, realize that you're going to be down in it uh, at some point, potentially. And yeah. what you're waiting for is the blast off. Yes, correct. So, yep. And also, you know, just to one last note here, this is uh, Dennis and Mines, right? You know, back in the in in the major bull market, you know, 20 years ago. And if you see the pullbacks, right, they are very big, 50%. What have we here? Yep. 40, 40. I think we did that last time as well. 50. I mean, these are nasty. But if you look at it in like seven, uh, what is it like four years, it increased 5,000%. So. I'm not saying that we're going to see that again. Hopefully we are, but, uh, but the overall trend is set to do some, some good work, you know, for the next four years. So five years, yeah, we're, two we're years. Pulling higher. We just yeah. gotta, the market conditions are there. Everything's there as mm -hmm. far as I, as, as what I look for. The ratio is yeah. cheap, everything. Yeah, exactly. But then again, you know, if, if the overall market and everything is red, you know, it, it doesn't matter how, well, it doesn't matter, but often when you have a very good case, it still gets pulled down with it uh, because people are just, they're not buying and they are selling. So, and I think yeah. that is what we are seeing as well in uh, in Uranium, so. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So anything else? Uh, this is, the last chart I want to show you is, this is the ratio that I love the most, Uranium divided by the overall spot price mm -hmm. and if we move all this uh all this here is just for me it's a massive inverse head and shoulders that we are, we are seeing right now uh boom 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 sorry right just do, doing something quick here we have the left shoulder the the head and then the right shoulder is formed right now here okay and uh and and the uranium stocks will not go ballistic until we get above this neckline here uh, they can they can do some big gains. Yes, I agree. But when when we get above this ratio here at around 0 0.7, 0 0.8, then we are we are good to go. Yeah, that uh, chart looks very similar to the XAU to gold ratio chart because uh, it's doing a bottoming pattern just like that. Yeah, very yeah. similarly. Yeah, exactly. And also uh, also as you see. This was when the bull market began, and where are we right now? I mean, it's mm -hmm. a it's a buying uh, a big buying opportunity in my in my view again, because the ratio yes you know the the, the spot price has increased like two and a half uh, maybe two two and a half, but the but compared to the miners the ratio is the same as back then. So I think we are primed again to to make the left shoulder here in this wedge. We have it right here. This is the uh, the formation that I have been looking at for like nine months or so. That's good. We need some we uh, positive. It, yeah. We need yeah. some positive gains in the portfolios at some point. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we do. It's been uh, 2022 has not been that fun at all, to say the least. Yeah. So. But the uh, the good thing is, if you're an investor, you get cheaper shares. So. Exactly. 
that's also why it's uh, it's very good to have a uh, yeah to dollar cost average you have some dry powder uh, at any time because yes it sucks you know that your mm -hmm. uranium investments goes down but at least you have this uh yeah this dry powder to buy so you, you have a you, you get something good out of this this pullback yep. by having dry powder it's much more easy to to sit in so i agree i agree well, i don't really have any other questions casper do you have anything else you'd like to share uh, not much, but uh, just uh, just before I went on, I looked at uh, you know Tesla back in 2011, and if you compare that to the uh, to the uh, URA today, if you look at that the, the first year or two, then you you uh, might see something that is very interesting. The uh, fractal uh, you're talking about? Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a, I can just quickly show it's uh, yeah, let's show don't waste it. your time, but it's very very uh, no, it's good intriguing. Uh, oops, sorry. This is it's go. okay. This is the uh, the Tesla, right? Here it is. And that's URA yeah. in the in the that's, yellow. Right? Yeah, that's URA. Yes, Come, correct. I'm just going to pull it down so it's easier to see. Mm -hmm. But you can clearly see, you know, the exact same formation, more or less. And if we are to do somewhat similar, I'm not saying that we're going to do. But then we have uh, we have some way to go. <laughs> so, yeah, we're just early in this mix. We need the overall markets to stop pulling yeah, us I, lower. Yeah, true, true, true. We need to. I, so I think maybe, you know, if I were to put a realistic time frame on it myself, you know, I still think we might have another year, two years. What do you think? Less, more? Don't know. I, I think. <clears throat> I think we have more actually, um, but then again, you know, if given how you know tiny the the spot market is right now, you know, there's more or less no uranium spot spot to buy, right? So if and when you know the the utilities wants to have the, their uranium, they will buy it no matter what. If it's fifty dollars or a hundred or two hundred, they don't care. They need the fuel. So it, as, I mean, as you said before, it can go very fast, very quickly. But but yeah. I think it will be a bit. I think it will be a bit more drawn out, uh, drawn out. But if it gets very explosive, um, I'm happy with that. But if I were to pick one, I would say three, four years. So okay. double the, so double, yeah. Okay, that's good. That's good. I'm patient, so it doesn't matter to me. Yeah, I'll same just, here. It allows me to buy more, and uh, that's kind of the way I view it. You know, I, I think we've got. And I'm not looking at it from the perspective of demand supply. I'm looking at it from the perspective of, of liquidity. Mm -hmm. And I think that we've got kind of a slowdown of like a year or two, six months to like two years, depends how big it is. And then, you know, when, when that liquidity comes back, that inflationary type move, yeah. it's gonna uh, that's be when it's, it's going to be big. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree. Yeah. The time frame a, is, yeah. is always the toughest. Yeah, right. exactly. That was actually what I was, I was going to ask is, do you have a, what, what are your exit strategy for uh, uranium? I, I have mine. I think I mentioned that last time, but, uh, but yeah. Well, so my, when looking at, I'm going to use the ratios. It'll be the gold to uranium ratio is the one that I, oh, okay. I will be looking at. Uh, that is uh, what I think's, one that that is basically an inflation adjusted number uh and then i'll look for the waves i'm gonna look at like elliott okay. wave I'll, I'll try to get the waves as they go up uh, i'm gonna hopefully it creates a very easily recognizable pattern hopefully the ratio is very expensive and then i will mm -hmm. be like i'm good <laughs> even if it goes up <laughs> a little bit more i'm good yeah i mean you will for sure not hit the top but that but that's not why we are investing, right? It's it's impossible to do. So, yep. But if that yeah, goes up quite a bit, if that goes up uh, vertically to like 0.15, like somewhere in that range, I would be absolutely happy if it hit anywhere near yeah. that. Yeah, that's amazing. That's a three x, right? And I think in the meantime, gold will yes will go higher as well. Not not that high, maybe, but it will go higher for sure. So we have like 5x or so, 6x in this ratio, I would say. 
depending on how high gold goes. Mm -hmm. so. Yes. But that's that's uh, really what is more. determining uh, it. And uh, that's okay. why I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to buy down here and I'm not afraid of the market volatility. I'm not really afraid of anything because this thing hasn't even moved. No, exactly, so, exactly. We're still basing out, so it's uh, it's still quite quite insane, right? You have the the bear market in the ratio, and then we have the sideways action. And then right now yes. we are starting to to somehow do something, hopefully something similar. Maybe not that high, but we are we are going to break about this uh, basing pattern here and then we and if i were to really think about it i think it's going to happen after this recessionary fear this slowdown mm -hmm. right after that comes i think you're going to start to see this wake up a little bit yeah so and same for oil oil as well you know that will also do i mean uh, right now we are paying in denmark uh, roughly what is it 2.2 dollars or so 2.3 4 maybe per liter Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think in two or three years, we'll pay double or triple that amount. So it's going to be insanely expensive. Yep. I agree. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's what I'm going to use for my exit strategy is, is that. And I'm going to draw a simple trend line going up. Yeah. And if, it's, if, if, if it looks like that type of pattern, or it's going to be the fractal where it sits and goes sideways, and we get one little last spike, and then it'll go down. Mm -hmm. I'll sell somewhere going on that spike. Yeah, uh, I'm not it's, trading. It's gonna in be tricky to time the exact. No, no, no. I'll. I mean, I'll try to time it as best I can. Exactly. But uh, I'll be selling into that strength up at the top there. Yeah. Um, the fractal is the one that it, it kind of goes up, it goes sideways, and then you get this spike, and then it'll come back down. We might get a one last double top, but I'm gonna try to get a little bit. On that entire top region yeah yeah and, and i think that's uh, the hardest part you know i think it's easy to buy but it's much more difficult to sell because when you see you know these massive gains you know within like a month or two it's very difficult for you to sell into that but uh yep that's what I you got to do in order to be a good investor so yeah so that's all i've got casper um one thing i'll say is you know thanks for coming on and sharing all of your uh your work with us. I really appreciate that. Oh, yeah. And uh, thank you for having me back on. Last time was fun and this time has been uh, similar. So it's, uh, it's always nice to talk uh, stocks and so on with, uh, with, uh, with people. Yeah, I agree. So I completely agree. So uh, if you guys want to follow Casper, uh, hit him up on Twitter. Uh, again, it's at uselink INV if you want to uh, join there. Please and, do. Uh, yeah, thanks for coming on, Casper. Really appreciate it. Any uh, final closing comments? <laughs> uh, no, I think I've uh, no. used my uh, my time here, so it's uh, it's perfectly fine. So <laughs> it's almost twelve. Uh, it's eleven o'clock here at night. So okay. Yeah. All right, we'll uh, we'll catch everyone later. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.